Hi guys. Hey everybody. <laughs> What's up? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Amber Marie, better known as XO Duchess. I bring you the hottest, latest, and greatest in branding, beauty, and behind the scenes. I am a digital marketer, a brand ambassador, and a beauty visionary, aka the doll boss. One of the main questions I always get asked since starting YouTube from my friends, from my followers, from fellow aspiring content creators is what do you use? How do you do what you do? What apps do you use? How do you edit? What is the post production like? And that's what I wanted to bring you guys from a beginner's perspective and hopefully offer you guys some inspiration or maybe some direction as to what you can use in your YouTube journey. Now, when it comes to my camera, I use a Canon T7i. It's a DSLR camera. It's so user friendly. It's my first camera that I've ever had that was DSLR and I've really learned the wave of it super quickly. I do watch a lot of YouTube videos. One of my favorite creators to watch is Think Media and he has really shed some light on a lot of confusion using topics for me. So yes, Canon T7i, if I'm recording from my phone, I have an iPhone X. I have set my settings to record in 4K. And if you aren't sure how to do that, I'm going to link that up here in the description, in one of the cards. So you can go check that video out and see how to do that. Now, if I'm editing on my phone and it's a short video, I do that in InShot and I'll pop that app up right here. It's the same app that I use whenever I'm creating for Instagram. Really fun. You can add titles to it. Lots of customiz customizable features and it's user friendly. Thumbnails. Whenever I'm creating a thumbnail for YouTube, nine times out of 10, I use an app called PhotoGrid right there. Now, this is also an app that I use for Instagram to put photos side by side. So if you're going through my Instagram feed at at XO Duchess X, you'll see that I have some side by side photos. This is what I use to create those, that content as well. But whenever I'm creating a thumbnail, I go into Photo Grid, I'll slide over to um, the ratio that's for YouTube, and I'll pick my thumbnail, I'll transfer it over to Photo Grid, and I'll add in whatever, you know. Um, bold topic I want to put on there, if I want to put emojis, if I want to put, you know, additional things, I'll just add image and put that right on there. And that's how I create my thumbnails. Now, if I want to increase saturation or if there's just like little tweaks that I want to do to do that, I use this Facetune. And there's the Facetune app right there. This is like if I want to go and increase like vibrancy in certain areas or really make it punchy and stand out, that's what I choose to use. Behind the scenes, whenever I am done editing my YouTube videos, I do all of my editing on iMovie, which is on my MacBook Pro, right there. And she's just really that girl for me. Typically, in my editing process, I will go in and I'll clip and take out whatever I want to take out and then go in to upload. Now, once I get to the upload portion in YouTube, um, up until a week ago, I was doing it all manually. Like I really didn't have any fundamental knowledge of what I should or shouldn't include in my actual description on my videos or in my tags or in my title. I really didn't know what to do as far as that's concerned. Now on YouTube, it's different than other platforms, say like Instagram, where hashtags and stuff carry a lot of weight and it's part of the algorithm and things like that. YouTube is different. When it comes to YouTube and analytics, YouTube is actually the second largest search engine next to Google, which I didn't even know. Now, now knowing that I've used that to my advantage and I've kind of optimized my titles and what I'm saying in the video and what I'm putting in my description to all match up so that whenever somebody does go to say Google and search, you know, best tips for beginners starting YouTube in 2020, if you know, all of that lines up, my video could rank in search or my video could rank in um, those type of areas. And you can even look at your algorithms and your analytics. I'll put the analytic, my analytics right here. And I've realized that I was starting to show up in search. 
that's how because I was able to utilize the fact that I know that YouTube on its own is a search engine and people will go to YouTube same way how I did when I was a brand new content creator and I'm like oh my gosh I have a Canon T7i and I have no idea how to use it let me go see what I can find on YouTube and that's how I found out I literally have friends of mine who have like figured out how to fix vehicles on YouTube or how to just do all types of crazy stuff on YouTube because it is a search engine at the end of the day so when you think about it like that yes we are creating content but we're creating content that's a value value that we want to get out to people because our message could potentially help them solve a problem so when I figured that out and once I've done all of this back end I've taken time to record the videos I've edited I've done my super catchy you know pop thumbnails to set myself up for success I didn't know how to do it from the back end of the actual platform itself that's where TubeBuddy comes in <laughs> was actually um thank media uses TubeBuddy as well as the content book so follow them love what they're doing and they had who was it? I want to say it was the content bug maybe yeah I think it was a content bug she offered a affiliate link for TubeBuddy and I was like well what do I have to lose like this is how you learn and grow if you can't do it, you know, do what you do best and hire out the rest. I'm a big advocate for delegating responsibility to people based on their strengths. Guess what I'm really good at? Creating content. I'm a creative. I'm really good at that. Like, I understand marketing. But when it comes to analytics and it comes to dissecting a brand new platform without knowing the history of it, I was at a loss. So at this point, I'm like, what do I have to lose? Download it to Buddy. Guys, TubeBuddy has been a game changer for me. I'm still getting the, the whole gist of it. If you're like me and you're under a thousand subscribers, they have what they call a discount for rising stars. So you're going to get a discounted rate to join. So if you've never even had any help or have no back history to analytics at all, I think TubeBuddy is a fantastic resource to use. Really easy. I'll put a little sne uh, screen grab right here of what it's like so the areas that it has helped me the most is to make sure that I'm hitting all of these markers that they say based on their years of tried and true evidence work now some of these include making sure that your description um, and title is between 20 and 70 characters I was using all 99 characters because I'm like if you're gonna give me a hundred characters or a hundred letters I'm gonna use all of them so I was making my titles really really long um, they suggest uh, they have a tool that's called the keyword Explorer so whenever you're typing in your keywords you know where they rank in search so you're able to maximize your impact just on what you're typing in your title and your description and what you're saying in your videos so these are things that I would have had no clue prior to downloading TubeBuddy and understanding it all from an analytics and algorithmic standpoint I was just typing whatever not only was I typing whatever I was literally putting like hashtag such and such in my tags because again I have a history from Instagram and that's what I thought I was supposed to be doing and that was incorrect TubeBuddy is teaching me and that is something that I think is a phenomenal tool for brand new content creators so don't sleep on TubeBuddy. I don't have an affiliate link for you, but I will link them down below so that whenever you try them and it does work out, I want you to come back here and tell me how amazing and how gracious it was of me to share that with you. You know? No, I'm just joking. Now, once I get all of that done, once I've fully edited my video, uploaded it, utilized Tube, TubeBuddy, I got everything in order and I'm set to post. I also look at posting schedules. Times do matter. Some days that I feel like have worked really, really good for me are like Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. For me and my audience, later in the afternoon does better. But you can find all this information on Google. Just Google like what times are best for you. There's different resources out there, but time does matter depending on when you post for what's going to be best for you and your audience audience. Now, once I have my time down, have all that ready, and I'm ready to hit publish, I hit publish. Right after I do that, I share it to Twitter. I share it to um, Facebook. I make sure that I put the link to my newest video in my description on my Instagram because I do, uh, I have like 50,000 followers on Instagram. I'm able to put a swipe up link in my story. So I do that as well. So that way I'm hitting on all platforms and I'm letting everybody know that I have a brand new video out. It's up to them whether or not they choose to support it, but it's a really fantastic way for people who 
would have maybe not found you otherwise to see you and then potentially subscribe, find value in your videos, or share with their friends and family. So that's where I am now. That's where my creative process is now. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm going to do another detailed video describing my actual camera that I use, what type of accessories I use for my camera, for those of you who are interested in that. So that will be coming out soon. I don't want you guys to miss it. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button down below. Leave me a comment and I'm gonna send you guys light and love. Keep creating, stay the course. It will get easier. Allow yourself grace and have fun. So that's it for this time. See you on the next one.